I'm going to play Duke Ellington's Satin Doll in the key of D. It's kind of an unusual key to put this song in, but it fits the ukulele really well in this key. You get a lot of open strings and open chords, and I like that. Now I'll go back and slowly go over the chord shapes that I'm using to make the chord melody. It's almost like an exercise in the second set of major patterns from the workbook. I'm using them almost exclusively to make the chord melody. We start out with a two chord major pattern right out of workbook number one. It's the B shapes in the book, and it's these two chord shapes that are often connected, like we talk about in the workbook. And then we're going to go up and start it here with our index finger across fret 2 and make the same two chord shapes here. So the melody lies under my ring finger on the high A string here. It's going to go... And then when I go to the partner chord here, the melody again is on the A and I put my little finger here. So then I repeat the exact same thing starting up here. Now the song calls for an E minor 7 chord and we're going to get it by going way up here to the 7th fret, lay our finger straight across spelling E minor 7 and play it, getting the melody on this high string again now I'm going to catch the next part of the melody with my little finger here and come back. Out, Catton! Now I need an E flat dominant chord. I'm going to get it down here. Open 1 1 1. But the melody's up here with my little finger. And I take it off, put it back on, and then go to my D major 7. It looks like this. Spelling 2 1 2 open D major 7. Now this chord here, the E flat, it's an E flat 9 if I make it like this, just like it is in workbook number 1, but I put my little finger here making it an E flat 9 13. We talk about this in the advanced jazz chords video. We can turn any 9 chord that we see in the workbook into a 13 by putting our little finger here and it fits the melody perfectly in this song. And then go to the major 7. Again, the melodies here on high A. After I hit that D major 7, I play some turnaround passing chords that sound like this. And what those are, after the D major 7, I play E minor 7, just like we started out with. And then slide the same chord position up here. So it's the same shape, but I slide it up here and put my index finger across fret 2. And now 
I go like this, going two, three, 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 to make a beautiful dominant chord. Takes us back to the beginning of the song. And we repeat all of that, work our way up to the bridge. The bridge has just four chords. We're going to go up here to fret five and lay our index finger straight across and fan out our fingers here. This is the second chord of one of our major patterns in workbook number one. Um, it spells five, six, seven, five. You can't see it down here. It, you could see it better if it was like this. Um, it's the same shape that we used to start the song out with, the second chord of the song. It's the same shape, but we've got it barred way up here in fret five. So that's our first chord. The second chord is a 6-9 chord that looks like this. And that's spelled 4-4-5-5. Four, four, five, five. And then we're going to go up using this shape again, but up here with our index finger across fret 7, fan out. Now we've got 7-8-9-7. Seven, seven. And then go to a dominant chord that looks like this, 6-7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. So it's just those four chords. It's sliding to up here. Let me go over that a little bit more slowly and show you where the melody is. So we're starting here with our first dominant chord. The melody's up here on uh, the highest string, and our, it's being caught with the bar here, so we're getting it like that. And, and now follow me down as I play the melody. And then I let up and put back on. And then I'm going to play the whole chord again, just like I did. And then follow down. And then go to the second chord, the G6-9. So she's nobody's fool, so I'm playing it cool as can be. Now I repeat that exact same thing starting up here on fret 7. Same chord shape. The melody's up here on this string. And now follow down. Lift up. Again, play all. And then I end it with this dominant chord. Uh, six, seven, seven, seven. So it's she's nobody's fool, so I'm playing it cool as can be. Then Give it a whirl, but I ain't for no girl catching me. And the melody's right there. And then I put in this little tag. Uh, a lot of people do various things right here. Uh, it's the little part that can go Rooney. It is or isn't a part of the song. It's whatever you want to do. It's just that little tag is up here in fret number eight. And then I slide the three fingers back, just playing those three. So. And again, you don't need that. That's just an extra little fill tag that's often used, and people play it in different ways. Now we end the song by going back and repeating that A section one last time. I'll show you that last little bit I did at the end. It's not necessary to the song. It's just something I put in. It's another little turnaround tag at the very end of the song when I went down. My satin dog. I hit the D major 7 and I went up here and make this familiar chord shape that we used in the bridge and just walk it down like that, starting on fret 4 this time and fanning out and then walking down chromatically and then come back and play again. The and now the song calls for an E flat dominant chord, and I can use this position right here, which spells six, seven, eight, six. And then I put my little finger on here to make just kind of a fun little tag. And then move it up there, and then hit the final D six nine chord here. And then I wrap it up finally with this uh, And it's just these two strings here, fret 5, and I'm going to hang on to one, the highest string up there, and just move this one down, move it down again, 
and then move it down one more time, and then come back to my 6-9 chord. And then I just rotate up with other positions that are D major jazz chords. Uh, the second one I use is here, it's a major 7, D major 7 spelled 7-9-9-9, and then I rotate up one more time back to a D 6-9. 11, 11, 12, 12. So these chords are all synonymous. They're just D major jazz chords. Whether they're 6, 9, or major 7, they really serve the same purpose for us in jazz, as we talk about in the workbooks. So let's play down one more time, just a little faster. <laughs> 